Howdy y'all, welcome back. Thank you for being here. Today, we are going to be looking at the very first photographs ever taken in Edinburgh, the capital city of Scotland, dating back to the late 1840s and the early 1850s. These images are attributed to one Thomas Keith, born 1827. He is credited as further developing and perfecting the wax paper process for taking images, and his photographs that we will look at today are recognized as being the earliest in Scottish history. Remarkably, Thomas Keith, according to this narrative, is better remembered for pioneering surgeries that he conducted beginning in the 1860s, having graduated first from the University of Edinburgh and then from the Royal College of Surgeons, before opening up a medical practice with his brother. Keith, however, from the mid-1840s through the end of the 1850s, captured hundreds of substantially important photographs documenting many parts of Scotland photographically for the first time. He was a founding member of the Photographic Society of Scotland, and he often shared his photographic excursions around Edinburgh with his brother-in-law, John Forbes White, whose work we will look at in a later video. Edinburgh is the capital city of Scotland, its second largest city, and the seventh most populous city in the United Kingdom, with over half a million residents calling Edinburgh home. Nicknamed the Athens of the North, Edinburgh has also been called throughout its early history, Eden or Edina. The human record of occupation of Edinburgh can be traced back over 10,000 years, with Mesolithic evidence appearing near Cramen. Further evidence includes significant artifacts related to bronze and Iron Age activities in the area, found mostly around what is known as Arthur's Seat. Romans are said to have arrived in Edinburgh in roughly the first century AD, and when they arrived, the area was heavily occupied by Celtic peoples, including the Vodadini. The Vodadini eventually amalgamated into the Godadin Kingdom, with the fortified Castle Rock of Edinburgh, known then as Eden, as its capital. We're told this Castle Rock remained the center of Edinburgh for the next 500 years. In 638, the castle of Edinburgh was captured and transferred first to Northumbria, an early Saxon kingdom, before then being relinquished to the Angles, a massive conglomerate of Germanic warriors who entered Britain following the fall of Rome. The Angles are the namesake of England, which literally translates to land of the Angles. In 950, according to the Pictish Chronicle, the fortified rock and mound of Eden, or Edinburgh, was abandoned by Germanic peoples and inherited by the Scots. The royal charter for Edinburgh can be tied back to King David I of Scotland. However, the exact date or even the exact year of the first charter is unknown. It seems to have occurred during the 1120s. The Shire of Edinburgh also appears to have been created by David during this time. The Shire was centered around the Castle Rock and its fortifications. Edinburgh was largely under English control from 1291 to 1314 and again from 1333 to 1341 during the Scottish Wars for Independence. In the middle of the 14th century, the French described Edinburgh as the capital of Scotland, although this was not official. Edinburgh remained a powerhouse and center for Scottish culture, all the while battling with its fellow European neighbors on the regular. In 1544, for example, the majority of Edinburgh was destroyed during a major burning campaign by the British. Despite this, Edinburgh continued to flourish and showcasing the dichotomy between British leaders, Edinburgh was awarded a university based off a royal charter in 1582 just 38 years after being nearly completely destroyed by the same government. Edinburgh was said to be the center for both the Scottish Reformation and the Wars of the Covenant. In 1603, King James VI took over control of England, successfully uniting the crowns of England and Scotland in a personal union known as the Union of the Crowns. During this time, Scotland recognized England's control but remained mostly autonomous. In the 17th century, Edinburgh was still defined by its city walls. Running out of space within the city, the town decided to build upwards. Hundreds of buildings were destroyed, renovated, or simply added onto and built on top of, raising the overall height of Edinburgh significantly. 
Buildings of 11 stories or more were common, numbering at dozens, if not over a hundred in the city. And these have been described by modern historians as the forerunners of modern day skyscrapers. Who would have thunk then that every single one of these immense 11 story or more buildings, according to this narrative, were torn down by order of Queen Victoria during the Victorian age and replaced with the predominantly Victorian buildings of Edinburgh, which still stand today. Just mere decades before the advent of photography, a city full of 16th century skyscrapers was wiped out and rebuilt for no other reason than the crown ordered it. Just a little food for thought there. In 1611, Edinburgh created the High Constables, considered to be the first statutory police force in the entire world. With the 1706 Treaty of Union, the parliaments of England and Scotland are joined together as the Kingdom of Great Britain, effective from May the 1st of 1707. Just for giggles, the Illuminati was also founded on May the 1st, 69 years later. By the first half of the 18th century, Edinburgh was described as one of Europe's most densely populated, overcrowded, and unsanitary towns. During the 1745 Jacobite Uprising, Edinburgh was briefly captured by the Highland Army, or the Highlanders. After the Highland Army was defeated, a period of reprisals and pacification followed, largely directed at the most important clans of Scotland. However, the city remained an important location for intellectuals within Great Britain and was home to the Scottish Enlightenment, earning it the nickname the Athens of the North. By 1820, Edinburgh was considered one of Scotland's industrial powerhouses, overtaking Glasgow as Scotland's most populated city. At this time, the Old Town became an increasingly dilapidated, overcrowded slum with a high mortality rate, leading to the loss of some of the ancient architecture. A major renovation project was headed by Lord William Chambers in the 1860s, transforming the final ruined parts of the city into the predominantly uniform Victorian architecture that we still see today. However, our photographs of Edinburgh are from the 1840s and the 1850s, meaning what we've seen today, according to this narrative, predates the last major renovations. And we should be able to see in these photographs, building structures, evidence of the many towers, the castle, the mound it sits upon, and all of which look absolutely ancient even in these earliest photographs. If ever a city was to be inherited, would Edinburgh fit the mold? I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas down below. As always, like, share, and subscribe to help the channel grow and to help share this information with as many eager new listeners as possible. I thank you so much for being part of the channel and being here today. And if you want to support me in a more direct way, you can do so here. You all mean the world to me, and the story of our world can be best understood by realizing what we've been handed, the layered and watered down versions of history. They will never do justice to the immense structures of our ancestors. So that's why I continue to make these videos to find a way to show these collections to you, to share images with you that could change your understanding of the world we live in. So again, thank you for being here and I look forward to talking to you on the next video.